In this video, we're doing even more work on differential equations. We're going to start by trying to go from a statement to creating that differential equation. So certain phrases uh, have very specific meaning in math, and some of these you are going to be expected to know. So when it says the rate of change of y with respect to x, we have to understand that to mean uh, dy dx. So we're going to have dy dx is proportional to means it's going to be equal to k times something that follows. So it's a constant of proportionality k times whatever's described in the next phrase. And in this case, that's the difference between y and 5. So that's going to be a difference means a subtraction, and between y and 5 uh, means in that order. So y minus 5. So there's our differential equation that converts that, that description into an actual differential equation. Okay, the next one, we have, again, the rate of change of y with respect to x. So that's going to be a dy dx. Here it varies directly with 3x squared and inversely with 2y. So that means you're going to get this constant of proportionality varies directly with means it's going to be times the 3x squared inversely with 2y means it'll be divided by 2y. So again, the rate of change of y with respect to x is dy dx varies directly with 3x squared means it's going to be a constant k times 3x squared and inversely with dy means divided by 2y. I'm going to add a second initial condition, and then we're going to try to solve and get the particular solution. So I'm going to add another initial condition. y is 9 over the square root of 2 when x is equal to positive 1. Okay, so let's see what we can do in terms of solving it. We're going to separate our variables. So I'm going to move the 2y to the side of dy, and here we're going to bring the 2 with it. Just looking ahead is going to make this integral be easier and cleaner. Uh, otherwise, we would leave the, the 2 behind on the x squared side and declutter as much as we can the y side. The constant k is going to stay there, and we're going to multiply the dx to the right side. We're going to integrate both sides, so that's going to get us y squared, and then we're going to get this uh, k times, and the integral of 3x squared is going to be x cubed and plus c, the constant of integration. So we can use our first initial condition. We're going to plug in negative 2 for the y and 0 for the x, and that's going to get us that the constant c is going to be 4. So we upgrade now, and we have y squared is equal to still this constant of integration that we want to determine times x to the third and then uh, plus 4. So now we can use our second initial condition. So we're going to plug in, uh, and I think I meant that, so I'm going to change it again here. I'm going to make that be a 3 because I'm trying to make this work out kind of nice in, in the final uh, solution. So I'm going to say 3 over square root of 2 squared is going to be k times 1 cubed plus 4. And so that will get us 9 halves is going to be k plus 4. And subtracting 4, which is 8 halves, is going to get us to k equals 1 half. So our equation is going to be y, so far we have y squared is equal to k, which we've decided is now 1 half, x to the third, plus 4. Now we want to solve for the y, so at least initially we're going to include a plus or minus in there, and we're going to try to decide uh, which of it is, which is it, the positive or the negative, we can't keep both. And since our initial condition gave us a y value of a negative 2, that means we're going to get a negative square root of 1 half x cubed plus 4. So there is our particular solution. Now, I'm going to ask you one more question here. 
what is the domain of y. So what happens is that this uh, square root is only going to be defined uh, when the what's inside here is greater than or equal to 0. So that means we need the 1 half x cubed plus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So that means that the 1 half x cubed is greater than or equal to negative 4, and that means the x cubed must be greater than or equal to negative 8. And so we're going to need for our domain to be x greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay? All right. Let's see what we've got next here. So now we've got the rate of change of y with respect to x varies directly with y and inversely with x. So that means dy dx, that's the rate of change of y with respect to x, varies directly with y, means k times y, and inversely with x means divided by x. We're going to now try to solve this. So, oops, we've got to separate our variables first. So we're going to have to divide the y to the dy side and multiply, we'll leave the k on the x side and multiply the dx there. We'll integrate both sides and get the natural log of the absolute value of y is going to be k times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Now this is going to be a real challenge to our understanding of logarithms here. So before we can exponentiate both sides, we need to get this k so that it's not blocking the way to the logarithm. And so we're going to need to bring that up into the logarithm as an exponent. So that's going to make that be the natural log of y is going to equal the natural log of x to the k power plus c. Does that make sense? Now we can exponentiate both sides, and we're going to get our y, and that's going to become, we're going to have this e to the c here is going to be just our constant in front, so it's going to be our c, and then e to the natural log of x to the k is going to be x to the k. We don't need the absolute value on the y any longer because that will be accounted for by that constant there. The absolute value of y would mean that y could either be a positive or a negative, and that's going to come out in the wash with our initial conditions determining whether c is going to be positive or negative. Okay, let's see what we can do. So we have two things we want to solve for here, the c and the k. That's why we have two different initial conditions. So let's see what we get from the first one y is going to be negative 3 when x is going to be 1. So that's going to be 1 to the k power. Well, 1 to any power is 1, so that is going to tell us that c is equal to negative 3. So now we have that y is going to be negative 3 x to the k. Now we're going to use our second initial condition and see if we can find out what the k is. So now we have negative 12 is equal to negative 3 times x, which is 2 to the k power. So if we divide by negative 3, we're going to get 4 is equal to 2 to the k. And from there, we can see that k must be 2, since 2 to the second is 4. And so finally, we get our solution is going to be y equals negative 3 x to the second power. There's our particular solution. Okay, got one more here. So again, we see a y prime, which uh, we're going to think of as a dy dx, and then go about our business of separating the variables. So I'm going to write that as dy dx. I'm going to go ahead and add that natural log of x squared to the right side. So we're going to move the 2x to the right side along with the dx. 
So that's going to get us dy. We're going to get the natural log of x squared. We're going to divide by 2x and multiply by the dx. Now we're going to integrate both sides, but I think if we do a little simplification first, it might help our cause. We can use our property of logarithms and bring that 2 out in front, and that will then be in a position to cancel with that 2 in the denominator. So that's going to make our uh, eventual integral be a little bit easier, not a simple one by any stretch. Okay, now we're ready to integrate both sides. So the left side is going to be a y. The right side, we need a u substitution. So if we say u is natural log of x, then its derivative is going to be 1 over x, and dx is going to be x times du. That's going to make our integral. We're going to call the natural log of x u, and when we replace the dx by x times du, we will account for that extra x that was in the denominator. So our integral now is just u du, and so that's going to be 1 half u squared, and we'll go back to what we had u was in terms of x, which is going to be a natural log of x squared plus our constant. So we're going to solve for c. So using our initial condition, we're going to plug in 2 for the y, and we're going to get 1 half natural log of 1, and then we're going to square, let me write it maybe in a little more um, valuation friendly form, squared and then plus our constant. So the natural log of 1 is 0, 0 squared is 0, times a half is still 0, so that's going to tell us that c is 2. And so we're going to get y is equal to 1 half the natural log squared of x and plus 2. And that is going to be our solution. Very good. Okie doke.